My name is Alistair Lee. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the Adobe Connect Events module. The Events module turns any content that you've got on the Adobe Connect server, whether that's a meeting room, a seminar room, some training, or even a document that you've got in the content library, into an event. And when you turn a piece of content into an event, it means that you can start registering known and unknown users, and track virtually every aspect of that event. The events module also creates a landing page and a registration form for each one of your events. That can tell users more information about the event itself. It can also be used to register those users and get them into your Adobe Connect database. In addition to the landing pages, you'll also notice it creates an event catalog and places each one of your events into that event catalog. That's actually what I'm looking at right now is the event catalog. At the very top, we've got a carousel that scrolls through each of the featured events that I've marked off as something I want to feature on top of my carousel. And then underneath that scrolling carousel, we've got a list view of each of the different events, and they're right now in chronological order. I can view that either as a list, as I'm doing right now, or switch to a calendar view. By doing that, I can see a calendar that features all of the different events that I might have, and I can scroll through from month to month. Whether I'm in the list view or the calendar view, you'll notice I've got some popular tags that I can use to filter out specific events or find events that are applicable specifically for me or specifically for an end user. I can click on any one of these events, either by clicking on up here in the carousel or clicking on the event details button for any one of these events to see more information about that event itself. I'm given a landing page that contains some imagery around that event. You can see here I've got a large banner image. I've got a longer description. On the event catalog we had shorter descriptions. Uh, I've got also speaker pages. I can see some information about our speaker here, but I can also click this No More button or the Speaker Info link at the very top to see more information about the speaker. And here we've got a detailed description for our speaker. And on every page we've got a button with a call to action. The call is to register now. And when I click that, I'm taken to that event registration form. To create an event, you'll need to be an event manager. If you're an event manager, you'll see this event button on the Create New line of Adobe Connect Central. You'll also be able to access the event management section of Adobe Connect. And under event management, you'll see a new event button. And when you click that, this is how you actually create a new event. And the event is going to be associated with some content on your Adobe Connect server, whether that's a meeting or some training. So you do need to have that content created first. This event is going to point to that content. You can see here that I can select an event template. Uh, there's a couple that will come out of the box. On this particular account, you can see that we've added quite a few. And I'll show you how to edit and add new templates as we go. For now, I'm just going to select the default template. We can give our, t our an event a name a custom URL just like any other content on Adobe Connect. We've got two options here for entering information and that's because our event will show up on that event catalog page. So we've got a short description for that event catalog page and a detailed or longer description for the landing page specific to our event. We've got the ability to register people without a password. I'd recommend that you do not turn this on if people might be coming to additional events, more than a single event they'll want to be able to register once and then use that same registration for multiple events. So I typically recommend you keeping this off. Uh, the next part, we actually tell Adobe Connect what type of event this is or what type of content we're associating this event with. That can, as I said before, be some on-demand content, literally anything on the Adobe Connect server in the content library. It can be a course or a curriculum that we've created with the training module. Or it could be some live content, whether that's a virtual classroom, a seminar room, or a standard meeting room. I'm just going to select the standard meeting room here. We've got the ability to require attendee approval. The ability to show this in a catalog, which is on by default. Uh, the ability to allow direct entry for attendees. This is a new option that came to us with Adobe Connect 9. It means if somebody's registering for this event in the last few minutes, they'll be taken directly to the event itself. Typically, when somebody registers for a live event a day or two in advance, they register for the event, they're thanked for the registration, then they close that web page down and will launch the event you know, in another two days. 
but if they're registering a few minutes before the event starts, or if that content is on demand, when you check this checkbox, it'll take somebody directly to the event itself. We've got a start time and an end time for the event, a uh, time zone, of course. We can add in a registration limit. So if you've got a 100 person meeting room, you might want to limit the event registration to 100 people. Uh, and then next, we can start customizing the event. We can upload an event logo. We can upload some imagery, a small banner image, a large banner image, uh, as well as a speaker photo and some speaker information for that speaker detail page. Next, we can set an event user policy. This might be set at an account level, so it might be grayed out if you're an event manager. This basically dictates whether somebody's going to enter the Adobe Connect database as a full user or as a guest. Uh, and then finally, we've got some tags, some metadata that we can associate with our event. And by doing this, users will be able to filter out specific events based on that metadata. So if this is a, an event or a meeting around insurance, I can click on that and it will show up when somebody clicks on that insurance tag to see all of the events associated with insurance. An event administrator can modify, add, and delete all of these different tags. We'll show that in a different video. When I click the next button, Adobe Connect is going to ask me which meeting I want to associate with my event. Remember back in that first step, I told it that this event was a meeting, but this could be some training or any content on the library. I'm just going to click the Geometrics Finance Meeting Room for now, hit Next again, and I'm taken to a page that lets me modify the registration questions. Now, at, on this page, I can simply click some of these default registration pages. If I want to capture somebody's state or their company name, I can turn that on. On the next page, I'll be able to create my own registration questions, and I can use those for marketing purposes. I can use those to help identify specific people or qualify leads. We'll take a look at all of that in just a second. But before we do, I do want to point out that this campaign tracking checkbox is also located on this page. And this campaign tracking can help you later on, after your event, figure out how people found out about your event. And what this does is enables you to use a slightly different URL for each of the different marketing campaigns that you're using to promote your event. So you might have one URL for Twitter, one for Facebook, you might have some online banner ads that you use a slightly different URL for, and Adobe Connect will be able to analyze all of those different URLs and figure out not just how many people each one of those different campaigns attracted, but how many people registered, how many followed through, how many ended up being qualified leads. So you can optimize your events going forward. I've also got the ability to add a campaign ID right now for any of the email invitations that I send out because the Adobe Connect Events module can also take care of sending out those emails. I'm just going to add in a campaign ID of email. I'll click Next and now I'm given the opportunity to create my own questions. Those can be multiple choice questions, short answer where somebody fills in a blank field, a yes or no question, and I can also shift the order of those questions up or down or remove any of my own custom questions. We're almost done here. The last step gives me the ability to manage the participants. Now, if I'm inviting a bunch of unknown users, I'm promoting this event on social media and with advertisements, I might not have anything to do here. I might not know who's going to register for my event. But if I do have people in my Adobe Connect database already, maybe they attended a previous event, maybe I've purchased a email distribution list from an organization, I can add all of those people now. And anybody I add to this list will automatically be sent an email invitation. And that's what we'll see in the next step under email options. Here you'll see that Adobe Connect is giving me a number of different email options. And in fact, we've increased the number of options with Adobe Connect 9, allowing me not only to send out those invitations, send out the event approvals, uh, reminders before the event happens, but I can also create my own custom triggers. The wonderful thing about the update with Adobe Connect 9 is these are all now beautifully formatted HTML emails. It's rich text. It contains all of the imagery and the branding that we created when we were uploading those images in the first step of this event wizard. I'm going to hit finish though right now to finish off this event creation process. And I've now created a very basic event. 
So Adobe Connect has created a beautiful landing page for me. It's created some fantastic email invitations. Uh, I've got event information, speaker information, and of course my event registration page to actually register those unknown users. Uh, and this is all using the default template. But what if you want to brand this or customize this based on your own branding? Well, all of that is out of the box with Adobe Connect as well. I'm going to go back to my event information and actually take a look at the event templates. You'll see that we can brand both the event templates as well as the email templates. We'll take a look at both very quickly. To do the editing of these templates, I'm going to click on the Edit Template link, and it's going to open up some technology that we've used from Adobe CQ5 to help us very quickly and very easily create our own custom templates. This gives me the ability to simply drag and drop any HTML objects directly onto my page. I can save this template in my templates folder if it's a template that only I'm going to have access to. Or if I'm an event administrator, I can sa save this as a shared template so that everybody on the Adobe Connect account will able, be able to access my template. That way I can create something that's consistent and consistently branded across all of the different events that we've got. And the way that I do this is, again, by simply dragging and dropping maybe another image onto my page uh, by using the objects in this CQ5 sidekick to completely customize every aspect of my event page. I can simply double click on any of these objects or click on the edit button, uh, upload another image, change some of the advanced settings. I've got a lot of power here to completely customize the way that these pages look and the way that they feel. In addition to all of these standard HTML objects though, I've also got access to all of the different Adobe Connect objects that have to do with my event. So I've got our account logo, we've got the banner images that we uploaded as part of that event creation process. We uploaded a small banner image and a large banner image, text about the information uh, for my event, the detailed information and the, uh, the short information. I've got information about the speaker, including the speaker name, speaker image, uh, speaker overview. All of that I've got access to so that I can start customizing this event registration page, the speaker page, whatever I'd like to customize, I've got the power to do that. I can go into this second tab on the CQ5 Sidekick to activate the template once I'm ready to go live with it, um, or to even edit some of the other properties about the page background, for example, and, and some of the other page properties. There is a tremendous amount of power here, and I can do this not only for the landing page and the registration page, but as you can see here, I've, got also, I've also got access to all of the email templates that we've created for maybe a, uh, notifying an attendee. So I can go ahead and edit this template, or even make a copy. If I want to start from this uh, default attendee notification and create my own, I can create a copy of that and start editing that copy. A lot of power here that uh, we've got access to to start really customizing and editing all of these different landing pages and microsites that are created automatically when you create an Adobe Connect event. So creating an event is the first step in terms of the Adobe Connect events module. Second step of course is actually holding the event live. The third step is what I want to show you now and that's the reporting and the analytics that are automatically generated after an event has happened. So I'm going to take a look at an event that's already taken place in my shared events folder. I'm going to click on a sample event here and then click on the reports tab to see some of the information that's generated automatically as I hold an event. Near the top of the page here I've got some aggregate information. I can see how many people were invited and how many people registered. But if I scroll down I can find information that might be a little more useful. I've got what we refer to here as a conversion funnel and this funnel shows me how many people came to my event information page. So these are the, the total number of people that could have registered. Uh, of those 83 people that visited my information page, 75 of them clicked to view my uh, registration page, and then 50 of those 75 people actually completed the registration. They actually followed through, registered, and, and submitted that registration. Of those, 42 people actually logged into my event, so they attended my live webinar in this case. And of those 42 people, I've got nine qualified leads. Well, what is a qualified lead? What defines a qualified lead? It turns out actually that I do as the event manager. If I click on the registration tab here at the top, the first section here gives me the ability to set the lead qualification criteria. 
So I can define what I want to be a, a qualified lead. I might want to check for attendance and make sure they stayed for at least 30 minutes, for example, of my live webinar. Uh, I might want to see whether they've filled out some of those registration questions or even look at how they filled them out. So I can take a look at any of the registration questions that I might have had as part of my registration process uh, and seeing if they uh, they filled out the question itself or if they'd filled it out in a specific way. And you can see that here with the poll questions that I've asked in the meeting itself. I can take a look at a poll question and say, I only want to filter out the people who answered this a specific way as, yes, this was a, a useful event. And I can make these independent rules if I say match any rule, or I can make them all required if I say match all rules. We've got on this page, and you may have noticed it on the previous page as well, the ability to download all of this data is as a uh, comma separated values report. So that can be opened up in Excel or the, the spreadsheet of your choice and you can start manipulating the data and modifying it into pivot tables or however you'd like to use it. Uh, the next report here we've got is something called the campaign report and I talked a bit about this when we were creating our event. I mentioned that we could use a different URL for each of the different campaigns we were running. And this is what the campaign report looks like. I can see how many people came from Facebook, how many people came from LinkedIn, from Twitter. Not only how many people registered, but how many people did Facebook attract to my event information page and how many of those became qualified leads. So I can see that, for example, LinkedIn might not be attracting quite as many people to my event information page, but more of them tend to be a qualified lead compared to something like Facebook. So this gives me the ability to really optimize where I'm spending my campaign dollars in the future. We've got here the ability to report on the registration questions. And in fact, we've got uh, a report here that looks at the answers of those registration questions, shows you the answer distribution. I can click on any of these to get some more information. And finally, I've got what we call a content report. And this looks at every aspect of the live event itself. This particular set of reports really only applies to live meetings and, and live seminars. And it gives me a number of really useful information around the engagement of my live session. So this is going to bring up an axis of attendance and then level of engagement throughout my webinar. I can see when people were most engaged and when people lost interest. And that will help me optimize future events based on this engagement report. Uh, underneath that, I can see how many people were uh, chatting, both publicly and privately. I can see how many questions were asked during my live event, how many of those questions actually got answered by our event hosts. Uh, I can see if we had any files that were available in a file download pod, how many of those had been downloaded. I can see how many people answered polls, and I can see how people set their status, if they were giving feedback to the presenter. Uh, all of that gets reported in our event analytics reports here. And below that, I've got all of the information about our attendees, when they came to the event, when they left the event. So I've got an attendance report as well. And that's all included in that downloadable event report. So a tremendous amount of data, reports, and analytics for the events. And that's a quick look at the Adobe Connect events module. Thanks for your time.